Um, I'd like to, it's my privilege to introduce my boss, uh, our governor, Governor Christy Noem. Um, she's really stepped up for agriculture. She stepped up for the state fair. Every time we've asked her to step up and, and get things done for the state, she's been there. She's been a solid uh, partner with our citizens, and I certainly appreciate her approach to, to setting the little quibbles aside and getting, getting things done, getting projects done. So with that, Governor Nome. Thank you, Hunter. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Can you all hear OK? Is this OK? Good. Well, thank you all for coming and for joining me on this special occasion. Uh, as you all know, in the early hours of October 31st, we lost our beef complex here at the State Fairgrounds. Uh, and it was critically important to the State Fair and so many in the community, but also across the state. So I wanted to come here and meet with all of you today. Many of you have been talking to me about a vision for the State Fair in the future, what a new facility could look like, and then I'll also talk about what I'm proposing in my budget address this year. I'm very glad to have Hunter Roberts with me. He is the Secretary of Agriculture, which will now soon be renamed the Secretary of Agriculture and Natural Resources Department. It'll be a streamlining of state government and efficiencies that he will now oversee those two agencies as well. He will be leading this project on the state side as well. And then I wanted to rec or also make sure that we were welcoming the mayor, that Mayor Gary Harrington is here with us today, and I appreciate him and his leadership in the community. So after I make a few opening statements, Mayor, I might ask you to share a few thoughts, too, on what this means to Huron and what it means to the entire state. But, um, you know, when we lost our open class beef uh, complex here at the state grounds, uh, it was a, a little bit of a scary night, I think, for the community and for those that work here. I want to thank the State Fair staff who stepped up and responded and also have done just great work since then. And I also want to thank the first responders that showed up that night. They came from Huron, uh, Cavour, and also Woolsey. They were on that scene that morning to contain the fire, make sure it didn't spread to other buildings and that it didn't spread beyond that to the community as well. They work hard each and every day to keep us safe, and we are grateful for what these first responders and many of them volunteers and what they do to our communities and for them. The beef complex served the state of South Dakota for many, many years and decades. Not only did we lose a great symbol for the state fair, but also one of its most important buildings. The size and the versatility of the complex uh, made it eligible to host many events throughout the year. Everything from livestock exhibitions, uh, uh, winter stalling for horses, there was barrel racings here, uh, including the Dakota Prairie's Little Britches Rodeo. I know many great memories were made here. Me and my family spent hundreds of hours in that building. We came to the State Horse Show every year. My kids showed in there. We showed cattle in there. And it is a big part of our life and our memories as well. But we're here today because we're looking forward. Whenever we get challenges, that creates for us opportunities. And if anybody understands challenges, it's the people of South Dakota. But for us, we're gonna use this as an opportunity to rebuild for the future. It's time to imagine all the new opportunities that we could have and all the new memories that can be made right here in this spot. As I said in my budget, budget request yesterday, I am asking and requesting the legislature legislature for $12 million to be spent towards a new facility. Uh, we're also going to raise $4 million um, from private industries and individuals that are willing to partner with us in this vision. We will use the $3 million that was a part of the insurance proceeds from it burning down uh, to make sure that we have adequate funds to build a state-of-the-art complex that I believe will be the best one in the country for hosting livestock events. The entire state of South Dakota will benefit from the investment that will be made right here in Huron. The new livestock complex will encompass 200,000 square feet. Uh, to give you some perspective, the last building that burned down on October 31st was 100,000 square feet. So it will double the size of it, and it will also give us more room for two rodeo arenas. It can showcase up to 2,000 head of beef cattle, it will allow the State Fair to host open class and 4-H beef cattle all under one roof during the State Fair each year. It will improve the experience for fair growers, goers, and it will hopefully draw even more participants and attendees in our wonderful State Fair. 
And for those of you that are here or have shown livestock or attended the fair, the way we had to move livestock across the grounds all the time wasn't always the best. This will make uh, safety a much better uh, issue as well and solve some problems for us there. It's in events like these and uh, the potential to attract ones that will sustain businesses um, for years to come and many careers in this area. As you can see in the renderings, the new livestock complex will be state of the art. This is going to make Huron stronger and it's going to give us a more, opportuni more opportunities to draw events for, that are regional but also national in size. For instance, the National Junior High School Rodeo Finals could be hosted here, which attracts many more than a thousand contestants from all over the world. And that would be just the beginning. Now this all wouldn't be possible without people who put their heads together. And uh, when I talked to them about making sure that we weren't just replacing a building, but that we were building for the future, that took that and ran with it and started the process in getting it underway. I hope that you all here today can see the potential, that you all can see the vision for where we go. These are renderings of the complex. The complex is not built. I'm interested in your input, your feedback on what it should look like, what it could be, but I also need your support. Um, uh, there's a lot of people in this state that don't necessarily come to the state fair. They don't necessarily participate in livestock shows or in rodeos but they might be interested in having a facility that could host a gun show or a sports show or any other type of convention that this kind of facility could attract for us. So um, talk about it, talk about the importance of it for economic development, what it can mean for bringing people into the state of South Dakota. And I've always been a firm believer of that old proverb that says what you see with your eyes you carry in your heart. And I believe that when people come to South Dakota and they're here with their livestock or they're visiting or they're making memories enjoying one of our special events that then from that time on south dakota will be a special place to them so with that i want to turn it over to the mayor let him share a few thoughts with you and then we're going to take some questions so mayor would you share a few words sure thank you well to say that the uh, city of Huron and the people are excited to be a, would be a non-statement uh, Yesterday, uh, when the fire happened uh, in our office, we were talking about day, next day, you know, what it'd be to take to replace this building and how important the building is to our state fair and to our community. And we came up with, and we're not contractors, by the way, but we came up with an idea, well, if we could get $5 million building, that'd be just great. And so we talked about that throughout the, throughout the week since the fire. Yesterday, I was on a Zoom call when the governor was talking about it and her her address and the people came to my offices and held up a piece of paper put 19 million dollars in front of me and I went oh. I couldn't believe it I said oh see so there is excitement we are excited if if you live in this area you know you drive by here on a almost any weekend then that building is always being utilized so and the other good thing about it too is the fact that there's so many kids we talk about memories there's so many kids that work so hard every year to get their projects ready to come to the state fair and those memories are made meeting friends from all across the state and that's something they live with and, and it's so important we're very pleased to have it in our town we're very pleased to have the state fair in our town we're proud of our state fair we're proud of what we have done to help and promote it each year and we'll keep doing that so with that we certainly appreciate your efforts and we'll be we'll be behind you so Great. thank you thank you appreciate it So again, the amount that I'm requesting in my budget uh, is $12 million that would come forward. The legislature does need to approve of that. I don't get to commit those dollars on my own. When legislative session comes forward, they will debate and talk about funding and where dollars should go. I'd like to have our legislators that are here please stand. I know Marley's here. Anybody else? Oh, yep. There we go. Roger's here too. Give them a round of applause. Oh, and Jim. Jim's here too. And if you, they are here because they obviously think this is an important project too. And they'll be carrying the message to the rest of the legislature what this project could mean, not just to this community, but also to the state. Uh, the general bill gets passed and funded at the end of session. And it's my hope that at that point in time that those dollars could partner with the three million from the insurance proceeds, the four million that will be privately raised to put up a facility unlike we see 
uh, in this country that really will host events that we just never had a shot at qualifying for before. So with that, let me open it up to any questions that you may have. There may be some from the media, but there may be some from the crowd or even comments that you'd like to make. We'd love to hear you just share those as well. Yes. The 20 million that you're allocating to this building, how is that the number that was agreed upon or put into the budget for you? And why is that the number that's being presented to the legislature? Bec the, he's asking how we came up with the dollars that we are asking for in the budget, the $12 million. And that is based off of other livestock facilities that we looked at across the rest of the country. Uh, what that build would cost, what construction costs would look at, and then what we could use the insurance proceeds and think that we realistically could raise in order to partner with those dollars to make it a reality. So looking at other projects across the country was, was a big component of finding out what we could build for the cost that we estimate we could be. And I know that Hunter and his team and the State Fair staff reached out to folks that build these type of facilities to make sure that those quotes were fairly accurate. But if we want to raise another $10 million and make it even bigger and better, we sure can do that. So that's, um, that's always the goal. But the state wants to be a partner in this. It's not the responsibility of the state to do the entire project. Um, but I think that this shows a good faith effort in how much I believe in the fact that this state fair needs to continue and can grow for the future and how much this community means to the economic viability of the state fair and the events we can host here to the, to the state of South Dakota. Yes. Sure. Yeah. On on Biden. Yeah. So you're asking if there's confusion on him. Yeah, we just had some confusion regarding their statements towards his. Um, well, the reality is, is if Joe Biden ends up in the White House, our future could be very different in South Dakota. So I wanted people to be clear on why I was being conservative in my budget. Um, you know, this pandemic's been hard on our state. Um, we have gone through a lot of challenges as far as families getting hit economically. Um, they haven't been able in a lot of different states to put food on their table or keep a roof over their heads because of what this pandemic has meant to specific industries. And then looking at this last presidential election, um, you know, what the different candidates embraced for policies was, was pretty concerning for me. Uh, Joe Biden has said that he wants to raise taxes. He's said that he supports the Green New Deal, which essentially eliminates fossil fuels. And, and if that were to become a reality, then we know that we're gonna see much higher fuel costs in South Dakota, energy costs. And I'm trying to budget to prepare for that kind of an environment. Um, I wanted folks to understand why I was asking them to be prudent and why I was asking them to be conservative. Because we could very well in two years be back here with people getting more, more money taken out of their pockets because of higher taxes, and we could have $4 gasoline again. And, and that's something that would be challenging for our state and that I want to make sure that we're all prepared for. Do you have a timeline that this is going to take place as well? Well, we know that uh, this uh, is not going to be utilized during the next year's state fair because it won't be built yet. But we're hoping to turn ground soon so that we can get it up and running as quickly as possible. Obviously, we have to have the money before we can start the project. So we need to raise money as soon as possible so that we know exactly what the renderings can look like and what construction will look like. So I don't know, Hunter, if you've got more specifics, but... 2022 fair. Well. We're hoping the 2022 fair, it will be built by. Uh, we, we're hoping to only miss one fair where we don't have a complex, but we also, that also means I need all of you to be partners with me. We need some help raising the money to get it committed. Is there, is, is there anything in place yet or speculated for You want to speak to that? Where we're writing checks to? Well, good question. I guess we're in the process of putting together a, a funding committee with chairs or co-chairs. Um, that'll go through the South Dakota State Fair Foundation is our hopes. So I guess that's, that's the place to start, State Fair Foundation, um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. 
What, what I also requested in my budget address was $7 million in other fund authority, which gives us the ability to spend those dollars as they come into the State Fair Foundation. So that's what we're planning on, and the, the legislature has to vote on that as well to give us the authority to spend that expenditure authority. Um, and so that is part of the budget discussion as well. What yes. Will the fairgrounds do in the interim time when we don't have to be a complex as far as hosting events? The mayor said there are events there almost every weekend. What are you guys going to do in the interim and through the state fair in 2021? Yeah, I'll, I'll let them speak to that, but that is going to be the challenge, is getting through that period of time where we don't have a complex in place and so it will have to be nimble and adapt and some of those events just probably will not happen because of, of the facility being gone but there'll also be some changes that Hunter and the State Fair staff will have to work through on how they handle next year's fair without that kind of building being in place. Yeah for, for a few of these events we're working on a few I guess changes to a, a existing facilities the Hippodrome would be a good example we're looking at some upgrades to that to help facilitate a few of these events. Uh, beyond that, as um, far as next year's State Fair, what that looks like, I guess plans would be to, to keep the sheep barn so that it can all be there, work with the animal industry to figure out how do we host this? Do we have a couple tents? What, what does that look like? Um, you know, that'll be a continuing discussion. We have a little bit of time, but we know we're not gonna have the beef complex. So um, we have plenty of time to plan for it, but it's something that we wanna work well with the, with the industry on what will work best for us. Other questions or comments? Yes. I'm not sure you can speak to this yet, but I'm wondering if the state of South Dakota is interested in joining the nine other states in the Texas lawsuit against disenfranchisement against four states mm. in the voting process. Can you speak to that? Well, that's a lawsuit that the Texas Attorney General's bringing, and that would be a decision for South Dakota's Attorney General's office. Um, and so I think they are weighing in on that. I believe they're interested in doing that, and I haven't followed up with them since. On the Amendment A issue, as far as. I don't have any comment on that right now. Any other questions? Yeah. Some constituents have asked about, you know, joining up the tech. Yes. So if you want to say anything on that. Yeah. Um, you know, that is our number one industry, and should we not have this as an alone for that? Yeah, that's one of the reasons why um, we are combining two agencies. The question is on the Department of Ag being combined with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. I proposed this this year, and the legislature will have to process a bill that would make it official, that would put those two agencies together. And the reason for doing so is because both of these agencies are regulatory in nature. They all deal with permitting, inspections, uh, dealing with livestock operations, water quality issues, a lot of the regulatory things that happen in state government go through those two different agencies. And because agriculture is so important to our state and it is our number one industry, is why it works and streamlines the same conversations that happen in DENR. It can be the same people working together on different projects that have knowledge in agriculture, have knowledge in water quality issues and regulatory issues can be in the same agency streamlining the effect. It'll be a savings to the taxpayers it is going to allow us to reduce some state employees, um, and it's also going to make it much more symbiotic in how they work together. Um, so anybody who's involved in agriculture should appreciate this merger. They should recognize that a lot of the people that they're dealing with when they go get their permits to put together livestock operations or feedlots, that now they know that individual's gonna know a little something about agriculture too. Um, before, um, maybe it was someone with an engineer who never really interacted with anybody that was in agriculture. Now they're going to be under the same roof and we'll be able to have the same conversations together. Same thing with water quality and environmental concerns. Um, it's wonderful to have those folks that be able to educate agriculture folks on why different things are in place and why that regulatory metric is used in certain situations. So 
it's a win-win for South Dakota because it will save us money, make us more efficient, and it's also going to help those two regulatory agencies work together. Yeah, absolutely. The question is on if, you know, how we're doing as a state financially and if we would have been able to do projects like this. The best way for me to answer that is that in talking to all of my colleagues running other states, they're in a very different situation than we are. Uh, many of them are going to be proposing tax increases to balance their budgets. Many of them are making budget cuts this year. Um, you know, I came forward and recommended a 2.4% increase for education, for state employees, and for health care providers this year. That's above what is required in state law. State law requires 1.5%. I recommended 2.4. There are going to be other states that will be cutting education dollars, that will be cutting health care providers, that will be cutting salaries and wages and laying off state employees. We're just not in that situation today, and they're certainly not going to be able to do projects like this investing in the future. Um, the other thing that many of these states are doing is they're taking on more debt. There's other states that are issuing more bonds in order to get through this difficult situation. So what I told the people of South Dakota in my budget address yesterday is that yes, uh, we're, we're, our economy and our budget is in a good position, but I still want to remind everybody that we need to be conservative. That we recognize that 2021 and 22 may not be our tough year. We're going to feel the effects of this pandemic for quite some time. And the end of 22 and 23 is really when a lot of our small businesses could start struggling. So we are focusing the state resources on savings. We're putting $50 million into a trust fund. We're putting uh, an extra 2% into reserves, which accounts for about $35 million extra into reserves. And then we're also going to focus on infrastructure, long-term commitments, that makes South Dakota better off for years and years to come. And this project is certainly one of those priorities. Yes. Well, it, it will, and, and when we get this completed, you better start building hotels and restaurants because and, this is going to bring thousands of people, and, and Huron needs to be ready. So, kind of yes. For you or the, the mayor, um, obviously you don't want to see a complex like the Beaver Complex burned down. Right. Now that it has, I mean, being able to build a complex like this in its place, a silver lining in an accident like that, and is the city prepared to host some of those major events that you are hoping could come here because of this building? Well, nobody wants to build a new project under these circumstances because right now we have to figure out how to get through without a building. Um, what we're doing is what South Dakota does, is that we take a really tough situation and we figure out what we can do to turn it into a long-term opportunity. And so I'll let the mayor talk a little bit about that. But I know for a lot of folks in this community, and a lot of you people have my cell phone number, have been <laughs> texting me and asking me, what are we going to do? What's your plans? And, um, and that's what I think is, is great about this state, is that we, everybody feels like these projects are their own and they're partners in it. And it's going to be a success. And it'll be exactly what we hoped it is because we're doing it together. But I'll let the mayor speak specifically um, to what it, a challenge this has been for this community because of watching that building go up in smoke. Well, you're absolutely right. We never want to see a, a disaster like that happen like it did that night. Uh, I was exercising that morning and I got a call from the uh, fire department. Chief called me and says, we're at the fairgrounds and the beef barn is gone. I said, what do you mean it's gone? They said, it's over, it's done. And that was at six o'clock in the morning. It was already done. Uh, but as far as accommodating people in our town, we're very fortunate that 
our, our complex here, our Safe Here complex, and Candy can back me up, we have about 2,500 camping sites right here on our complex. There isn't another spot in South Dakota, I believe, that has that many camping sites. And so many of the people that come in for rodeos and stuff like that, they want to be next to their horses. They want to be on the ground. So they're not ones that are going to be staying in hotels a lot. They will be, they will be staying in their campers. And when we have a state fair or when we have a, like our big rodeos and stuff, and we have, we have the red power and stuff like that here, you'll see our grounds are full of campers. So that, that's one thing. Uh, do we need more restaurants and hotels? Oh yeah, that well, we do. Uh, I would not say we don't on that. But uh, we can accommodate uh, the people that come for these type of facilities, I'm sure of that. And the people that do come for these type of uh, events like at the horses and the cows and stuff like that, they're used to camping. So uh, it's kind of a built-in thing. I hope that answered your question. Other questions, comments? Governor Hill, yes. what are you personally looking forward to with this project? And um, do you hope to come to any events or anything once it's finished? Yes, I, I plan to spend a lot, of, a lot of time here like I do every year with my family. So I'm, I'm excited about it. I think that this is a can-do community um, that, that knows how to take on projects and get them done. So I, I'm confident that in two years we'll be back here celebrating this new complex and excited about all the people that want to come and participate in events here. Governor, I just have a comment. And then I want to thank you for what I call South Dakota common sense. Mm -hmm. I have a brother in Michigan and a sister in Washington, and they're constantly begging me, what What do you do to get someone like yourself in position of power mm -hmm. to use common sense when it comes to making decisions? Mm -hmm. So I want to applaud you today, and that you have the support of my circle of friends and many, many others. Uh -oh. Well, thank you. Well, you tell them if they want to move to South Dakota that we'd welcome them with open arms, as as long as they like their freedom. Yep. Anything else? I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you coming.